number nine. Equals the sign of x plus three. S six. What will that plus three do to the graph? Good. Move the midline up three. You might think, oh, it moves to the left three. Why might someone get that? Because it's like slope. What? Is that how it works with slope? Slope? If you're adding three, then it might go to the Uh, uh, okay, that's it's kind of like a y intercept, but well, someone exactly. would know that because if you're um, adding it not the way that's added, but if you're adding yeah. it, it's moving usually to the left, and if you're subtracting, yeah. but like what what could I add to this expression? Parentheses around the x plus three, and then that way, and then that that way. Way. Okay. good. So it's good to uh, check yourself on that. It's not parentheses, so it's not to the left three. It's up three. Pretty simple, so we'll just put a midline at three. And there's nothing else to change, so we just graph it like normal. So we got a full period. Uh, let's just mark off, oh, let's, let's do two periods on the right side here. So we'll mark off two pi, that should be one period, and four pi should mark another one. Uh, there's pi there, pi over two. You know, the sine wave looks like this. Normally starts at the, the middle. It goes up to the max, down to the mid. So it starts here, goes up one, because the, what is one? Uh, the amplitude is one. Goes up there, goes down to the midline again, down to the minimum, up there to the midline. Then we do it all over again. There, mid or the minimum, and then back up to the midline. Just keep going forever if you wanted to. There's two periods though. Okay, we have three. That's it. Other questions? Yeah. Thirteen. Thirteen. One more. That is. So what's this plus pi over four going to do with the graph? It's going to move it to the left pi over four. Left pi over four. And nothing else changes, so that's kind of nice. So we would normally start here. And at pi over two, we would be at the maximum of one. And then at pi, we would be back down to the midline. Three pi over two. The sine of three pi over two is negative one, so we'd be back down here at negative one. Crash into this guy here. Uh, so that's one. Maybe that's one. So down to negative one. Back up to the midline at two pi. Down like that. That would be normal. But it moves to the left pi over four. Well, here's pi over two. Pi over four would be right there. It's going to move it to the left, so we need to go to negative pi over four. And then we need to show that we know where all those points have landed. We're just going to go move this guy over <laughs> pi over 4. Where does this go? This goes to negative pi over 4. Where would this go? Pi over 4. Pi over 4. Where would this be? Uh, 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 4. How did you do that? So it's 3 fourths three of the way to pi. 3 fourths of the way to pi. Also, it's pi minus pi over 4. We It started at pi and then moved over to pi, moved to the last pi over four. So we started pi uh, over one minus pi over four. That's four pi over four minus one pi over four. That's three pi over four. And move this one over. Where's that going to be? And then five pi over four, three pi over two minus pi over four would be five pi over four. And move this to the left pi over four. Where would that be? Seven pi over four. Okay, so this is uh, the 
important thing that I'm looking for you to do is label where these four five points are. So I got negative pi over four, I got pi over four, I got three pi over four, I got five pi over four, and seven pi over four. If in doubt, if it's not immediately apparent to you, just take the originals. Now this includes if you change the period as well. Make sure you know where everything is if the period is changed. And then if it moves to the left, subtract that much for each of those x values. Or if it's to the right, add that much to each of these x values, whatever they are. Is that making sense, or am I being too vague, not explaining well enough? Okay. More questions? We're still kind of more thinking about how to find the period. How to find the period. Let me pick a problem that has a period to find that's not too high such as 20. <coughs> There we found a period. We haven't really done anything else, but we did find a period. Um, now what? If we've got two more things that happen to this graph, or those two things that happen to this graph? Uh, it will move the left yep. two pi yes. and move down three. <coughs> the left two pi and down three. Okay. Uh, well, obviously this would be negative one, since the amplitude is one, this is positive one. Down one, two, three. So its new midline is at negative three. down here so this midline is at negative three. <coughs> then it moves to the left, two pi. So we'll move all these points to the left, two pi. Should we think about this though? Its period is pi. And this sine wave goes infinitely in both directions. And it just keeps going. So I'm putting more stuff to the right because we're about to move it to the left. So if I were to move this to the left pi, just one pi for now, where would that put this guy right here? It's at pi right now. On the x axis. On the y, y axis. Okay, so I'll move it to the left, pi. All right, and now this guy is, where is this? Same place where the other one was. Where that one was. It is at now pi, because the period is pi, every, every full. Uh, uh, what am I trying to think of? The cycle is pi. Stretch this out, this isn't quite good enough. Uh, okay, so that's at pi now. So this is at pi now where if I move, I've only moved it to the left pi so far. If I move it to the left, it's a second pi. What will happen? It will just land right there. Right there. And it just keeps, you know, since the, the, the amount that we move it and the, and the uh, let's say that the period is a, is a, uh, the amount that I move it is a factor, no, not a factor, a multiple of the, the period. Let's just for the, for the sake of some practice, just pretend like it wasn't, uh, you know, didn't work out that nicely. 
Then we just take each of these y values, like 0, we take 0, minus 2 pi, and uh, pi over 4, minus 2 pi, because it's moving to the left, 2 pi, pi over 2, minus 2 pi, 2 pi over 4, <coughs> minus 2 pi, and pi. If we did that and we just moved one cycle over 2 pi, we would just wind up you know, not having all of this probably, and just one single uh, cycle right there. But then if we're, if we're clever, we'll notice, well, it's from here to here is pi. I can grab another one and grab another one and we'll make the same thing. Is that all right? Other questions? Period always, 2 pi over Let's get everything put away. Set a piece of paper. Got three problems for you. Just kind of uh, summarize these first two sections that we've done. Okay. So obviously it's not just y equals sine of x. That would be fairly simple by this. What do we expect to see happen to the graph because of the negative three? It's going to be three flopped or something. Flipped over vertically. Yeah, it's going to be three times as big. Three times as big. So the what do we the amplitude will be three. Not negative three, but three. Okay, and what about this guy? What's this going to change? So that would be the period is 2 pi over b. That is pi over 2. So now that's the period. Uh, and the amplitude is 3. OK, we don't shift it up or down. We don't do either of those. We don't shift it left and right. We don't need to do either of those. As we're working through this, make sure that you're looking at the person's quiz who you have in front of you and uh, pointing anything out that they might have incorrect. So if they have either of these written down, it might help you. They just have a graph, then maybe that's what you have to work with. So the period is the same, and it, it's not moved left or right, so it's just going to be flipped over what it would normally be if it was a sine wave. So the period is uh, pi over 2, so which means this would be what? Pi over 4. Pi over 4, and this would be? Pi over no. What? Pi over 8. Yeah. Pi over 8, yeah. Remember, you can always take the period and then just divide it into four pieces. Right? This would be a fourth of this, this would be a half of this, and this one would be three fourths of this. Okay? So it would actually be three of these. This is a fourth, so this will be three pi over eight. <coughs> Alright, amplitude is three, one, two, three. But the midline is still on the x-axis. So normally the sign would go like this. But now it's what is it going to look like now? It's going to go down first. Instead. Down first instead of up. Good. Down first instead of up. So it's just flipped over like that. So it should go uh, from here down to its minimum at pi over 8, up to the midline at pi over 4, up to its maximum at 3 pi over 8, and back down and finishing the period out. If I go a full period again, which I will likely ask you to do on a test or a quiz to show two periods, where will that put that end of it? Pi, pi over two and another pi over two. Um, good. Any questions about that? Onward we go. Right, 
you to one, it's not going to be flipped over. Well, maybe we can't quite work that out because we don't know if it's moved up, not or moved up or not. Um, what's this going to do? The right one. Nope. Right. What? Zero. That. You're right. Right. Pi. And this one. Move it up two. Up two. Uh, one, two. There's a new midline. Uh, its amplitude is 1, so it goes from 2 up to 3, and from 2 down to 1. You can mark those off. Uh, its period is the same like as normal, which is 2 pi. Um, so depending on what we want to do, we could mark off a full period, like actually draw it and then move it say, well, I know where it's going to be. If it's you know, normal, then I'll move it to the, well, to the right is where we want to move it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and draw it. So the cosine typically looks like that. So that's what it should look like. Start at the maximum, go down to its minimum, back up to its maximum. So it starts here, across at the midline, down to the minimum, across the midline again, and up to the maximum. So this would be pi over uh, 2, this would be pi, this would be 3 pi over 2, and this would be 2 pi. Is that right? No. Not quite right. So far this is just y equals cosine of x. This guy's going to move to the right pi. Where's pi? There's pi. So this is going to move over to pi and everything else with it. All these points. This moves over there. And this guy over. Here's there. This guy's here. And over there and here. It's a nice convenient one. We can see that this is at pi. This is 3 pi over 2. This is 2 pi. Where will this be? Uh, be three pi. The other one would be 3 pi. 6 pi over 2. 6 pi is 3 pi. <coughs> and then we can uh, draw another period. Where would that put this? Um, negative pi. Negative pi. Because this is at pi, one full period is 2 pi, so this must be. everything. The whole, the whole shooting match. Hmm. We've got, uh, what does this tell us? Uh, Amplitude two. two. Right. So we're from the midline, should go up two instead of up one. Uh, what does this tell us? Period, four, period. period is two pi over four pi over two. <coughs> up two. So this tells us what? Left pi over three. This one? It's gonna be down over three. Down to three. So my suggestion would be to do everything, including the period change, and move the shift to the left and right to the last. That would avoid any mistakes. Um, so what can, what can we show pretty easily? It's right off the bat. Uh, midline. Midline down. Midline down. 
Go straight forward. If it moves down three, just move your midline down three. Okay, so check. That's not a check. Okay. You can move to the left time. Well, that's why I said leave the shifting left and right to the last. Right. Especially leave it until after you figured out where all the where it would land within the new period. Show the amplitude is two. So it goes from here up to here. That's a negative one. From here down to there. Negative five. five. You just kind of keep that in mind when you go to graph these waves that will be that tall if they go down that far. All right, so check there. Okay. So now, as we normally would, we'll graph this sine wave with a period of pi over two. After that, after we figure out where those five key points are, we'll move them to the left pi over three. So we've got a period of pi over two. This will be pi over four. This will be pi over eight. This will be three pi. And we'll go here to there, down to there, down here. And then last thing would be to be what now? Left pi over three. So all these points at zero, pi over eight, pi over four, three pi over eight, and pi over two move to the left pi over three. Where does that put them? Probably gonna have to do some subtraction here, uh, do some actual math. So we'll start with zero, that's the easiest one. Zero minus pi over three is negative pi over three. Graph this new one. In. So we gotta figure out where that is. Right? Let's see. Here's negative pi over two. So this would be negative pi. So negative pi over three would cut negative pi into thirds. So we're just gonna do my best. That's like that's negative pi over three. So this guy moves over here. shift this point over pi over 3, where is that? Well, pi over 8 minus pi over 3, we're just going to have to use 1 here. So we need to find a couple of them. The fourth common denominator. So 3 pi over 24 minus 8 or negative 5 pi over 24. Okay. At this point, if it's on the test or something, I don't care if it's to scale or not. But if you mark it right, then it's right. So mark it negative 5 pi over 24. Good. Um, guy who moves over. Looks like zero, but uh, I don't trust that. It started, uh, where did it start? Over here. At pi over four, right? That came up and went down like that. So it's pi over four. So we're going to start pi over four and subtract pi over three. So 12 is going to be our common denominator. So three pi over 12 minus four pi over 12. Negative pi over 12. So this guy right here, maybe I'd want to nudge this over a little bit so it looks like it's in the negatives. Right there. Negative pi over 12. Now it's time to move this guy over here. 3 pi over 8 to the left pi over 3. again, 9 pi over 24 minus 8 pi over 24 equals 
Pirate 24. From Pyro 2, minus 3 pi, or minus Pyro 3. 6 will be a common denominator. So 3 Pyro 6 minus 2. Closer to the line than pi over 12 is. Just seems like something is. I'll take a look at it. If I made a mistake, I'll, I will truthfully let you know. It. So, what should this quiz be worth? 12. So, I uh, scored out of 12, two points for writing it down. The third point is for trying, the fourth point on and every question this is, fourth point is for getting it right. Today, uh, we're going to skip to 14.5 first because it's about graphs and stuff. Why wouldn't we just keep that mentality going and then do something else? Okay, so let's look at 14.5. Open your books. Fourteen point five. And you can get out your notes. And really safely stow your quizzes. For future reference. You would think that the flight attendant would have to tell you how to fasten your seatbelt. Like, I shouldn't have to tell you to go sad. I don't want to be little children. Well, that's the first time we've heard about it. I'm getting your books out. I suppose. You almost never. Oh, I mean, you know, I guess that you don't have to have your book, but. It's a nice reference. It's not a bad thing. Okay, so now we're going to be told that there's some wave. So what they call a sinusoidal wave, as I told you that word before, right? That's Japanese. Japanese word. So there's a sinusoidal wave, which means a wave, like a sine wave, or a cosine wave. But really, you can write all these using either sine or cosine, because they both have the same shape. So as long as we like throw a negative in there, and a shift, and an amplitude, and all that kind of stuff, uh, we can make any of it fit that we wanted to. Okay. So uh, we'll just pull from the sample in the book, and it looks something like this. And the things that they tell you are that this is a pi over 8, comma 5. This is what we call a maximum. And down here at this point, 3 pi over 8, comma, negative 1. What do you think this is called? Minimum. Got a maximum and a minimum. So that's what they're going to talk to you. When they tell you it's a maximum and minimum, we'll assume that it's a maximum and the immediate after that minimum, or just before that minimum. Okay. Because if you think about it, if I just tell you that there's a maximum and a minimum somewhere, I could be telling you 
Uh, here's this maximum, and here's this minimum. That kind of, this kind of can throw you off. If you, if you didn't know that it was definitely this max and the next minimum, yeah. if there happened to be a bunch of ways in between there, even if I gave you the same points, like this period, if you had the same points, would be bigger or smaller than that period over there? It would be smaller. Smaller. If these two points are the same as what I'm talking about over here, pi over 8 over 2, then 5 and 3 pi over 8 cover negative 1, we fit more in between those two points. Okay, so it's important that when you read max and min that you assume that um, it's that they're right next to each other. The max and the min that are right next to each other. Nothing in between but one little curve. So let's think about all the things that we have to figure out. A sine B X minus H plus. If we can figure out all those things, plug them in, we'll be fine. Or we can do the cosine if the cosine makes more sense. Okay. You know, it doesn't really matter. Um, so, can we figure out what A is? What is the amplitude? The diff um, pi over A? No, it would be the that. The, the y values there are the vertical values, right? Yeah. Um, it would be. Huh. Can't think of a reference. Maybe if I make this look a little bit more scale. Two? Why do you think two? It's halfway in between pi and negative. Halfway in between your maximum and your minimum. If you wanted to find halfway in between two things, then how would you do that? If I add them up and divide by two. Add them up, divide by two. It's really like finding the average between these two things, right? Makes yeah. sense. Okay, so um, what did that just give us? Midline. Give us the midline. Did it give us the amplitude? Uh, so the midline, though, that's good, midline. Which of these would be the midline? No. K. 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 Yeah. K right. is equal to, well, I'll take the, uh, what do we do with it? Um, add them up. Add them up, the maximum plus the minimum, and divide by 2. Wouldn't it be the absolute value? Yeah, well, let's see what we get when we do that. So in this case, we take 5 plus negative 1 over 2, 4 over 2, 2. Does that seem to fit? This is a 2. And then what did, what did we figure out the uh, amplitude what? 3. 3. Does that fit? If this is 2 and this is 5, is the amplitude then 3? Yeah. yeah. So this is right. I know it seems strange a little bit, but we need to always add them. And if one of them winds up being negative, that's important. And it needs to be negative. Because what we're looking for is the basically the average value between the two. What's smack in the middle of those two values? The midline. Yeah, the midline. And if one of them is negative, well, it's going to pull the average down. If we make it positive, then we'd be finding really the average between positive 5 and positive 1, right? Okay. So the maximum value plus the minimum value, if they're negative, negative, let them be negative. So this is k, so we know what that is. Okay. How are we going to find that amplitude? Okay, take the maximum minus the midline. A equals maximum minus midline. <coughs> first off, first. Here's another way that we could do it. Okay. I'll just 
do substitution, k is this value right here, right? k is this value, m plus m over 2. So if I do, make sure I got this here. So m minus m plus m over 2, big M plus little m over 2. So I'm going to put these together, well, I need a common denominator. So I've got uh, 2m over 2 minus m plus little m over 2 equals, okay. so this will be the same as plus negative m minus m. Redistribute the negative. So 2m minus m is just a single m uh, minus little m over the common denominator 2. m minus k, or you can just take m minus m over 2, the difference between the two. Makes sense. If I take the difference between these two values and divide it by 2, well, I'll have the difference between the two will be the full uh, height from bottom to top. And if I divide it by 2, that'll be the amplitude. So a, in this case, figure out what the uh, period is. How are we going to figure out what the period is? Let's take a look at that picture. Any, I mean, look at those points. Think about those points. What do we, from those points, what kind of a conclusion can we make about the period? The period is 2 pi over b, right? It is 2 pi over b, so... Period would be... Why don't you add the maximum plus minimum, because it would be the other side. Or... How about this? How about the... Um, by the way, the when we say the maximum, we we're talking about the y value. The maximum is 5 and the minimum is negative yeah. 1. But the x, the x part of the maximum, the x part of the minimum. So what about the distance from here to there? How much of the period is that? Half. 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 So if we then figure out how big that is, multiply it by 2, get a period. And then we can figure out what b is, because b definitely can be this to the period. So how wide is this? How would you figure that out? How far is it from there to there? Yeah. Pi over eight, or three pi over eight minus pi over eight. Three pi over eight minus pi over eight. So the period yeah. is equal to two times three pi over eight minus pi over eight. It's twice as big as the distance between Two. 3 pi over 8 minus pi over 8 is 2 pi over 8 is pi over 4. So the period is pi over 2. And the period is pi over 2. Does that, what does that tell us? Does that be? No, the period is 2 pi over b. And the period is pi over 2, so pi over 2 is equal to 2 pi over b, and we solve for b. Take 2 pi times pi over 2. 2 pi times pi over 2? Because uh, you have to times 2 pi to both sides. 
right times by 2 pi, 2 pi over 1. What I'll get here is 4 uh, pi squared. Both uh, all are reciprocal. Yeah. Reciprocal of what? 2 pi. So 1 over 2 pi? Yeah. yeah. 1 over 2 pi? Yeah. Cancel. You have 4 here. Okay, so what do we have now? 1 fourth equals? B. 1 over B. B still is a denominator, nothing's been done about that so far. But if 1 over 4 equals 1 over B, then what must B be equal to? 4. 4. Okay. Right, B would be equal to the reciprocal of that. Right? Is that a lot? figure out the vertical uh, shift. Uh, we figured out A, because once we knew that, we could figure out how far it was from the vertical shift to the maximum. Now we figured out B. Okay, we figured out its period. So uh, we can figure out B. So there's B. Right there. All right. Is H pi over 2? Now what makes you think that it's pi over 2? <laughs> it just seems like the right answer. <laughs> okay. Um, well, we just have to figure out how far it has shifted. What point do you think would be easiest to figure out how far it's shifted, given that it like started as a sine wave, which would start or we could, we could use the cosine wave. If we want to change our mind and use the cosine wave, we can certainly do that. So the amplitude is the same, vertical shift is the same, period is the same. You can change it to cosine if you want to. If it, this looks more like a cosine wave. Or sine starts at the origin. Sine starts at the y-axis. Yeah. At x equals zero. So. Or, it, oh, okay, I guess it, what you meant is it starts at the midline. Yeah. It starts at the midline, yeah. Um, which means, like, we could look at this as the, the starting point of a sine wave that got moved to the right. Or we could go back over here and find this guy right here that has moved to the left. But you know, we have two points. Okay. 3 pi over 8 would be the easiest. case. Use 3 pi over 8. Okay. Because pi over 2 or yeah. two, that's just as a pi over 8. Not that way. Okay, so this, like if we think of this as a point that was right on the y-axis and it's moved over pi over 8, then sure, h could be pi over 8, right? h could be pi over 8, minus pi over 8 would move it to the right pi over 8. Would that, would that be a sine wave? Yeah. So let's use the cosine wave instead of the sine wave. And we'll use h is pi over 8. That was pretty easy. We could see the maximum. Cosine starts at the maximum, just scooch it over a little bit. Pi over eight. So there's room for a little bit of flexibility, creativity, differences between your answers. All right. Um, so yeah, if we just change this, so it doesn't have to be a sine wave. Nope. The sine wave, the, the sine and the cosine are both called sinusoidal waves, which is kind of a funny thing. And for sinusoidal, why are they called cosine waves? Cosine. If we change it to cosine, we can just let h be pi over 8 and say it's moved to the right pi over 8. No, so I just change, change the cosine and h. Yeah, do you see why? I, 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 see, I see why you see it. See how it looks? It's a little more natural to think, but that's that cosine wave just barely moved to the right. So then we'll let h be pi over 8. Make sure you get h right, never really positive and negatives. But it has moved to the right pi over 8. If it moved to the left pi over 8, then h would have to be negative pi over 8. So we figured in, figured out, whatever, all of these things. So final, let's get the final answer here. y equals 3 times the cosine of x 
Oh, sorry. A B. Because it's in blood. B was uh, four. Four times x minus pi over eight plus. Tell you how how high the highest is and how low the lowest is. Making the amplitude and the midline fairly simple things to figure out. The midline would just be the average of the two y values. Be right in the middle. What's right in the middle? How do you find an average? Add them up, divide by two. This is only two meters. Here we want to find the amplitude, so we want to find the distance between the two. How far is it from the top to the bottom? And then divide that in two. That's how. One half of the wave is. Then the period, we can always take two times uh, one of the x values minus the other x value. That tells us how far it is in between those. But if you think about it, if I give you a maximum and a minimum right after that, that's always going to be one half of a period. Right? So always take that distance and multiply it by two. We find the period. Set it equal to 2 pi over b and solve for b. I suppose you can just figure where that where that maximum value is, and then I guess you could always use a cosine wave to say, well, that maximum has moved to the right or to the left, however much. Without any other constraints, just pick cosine always and move that maximum value over. Well, let's see what you guys can do. Uh, I'll leave this up here, follow if you want some of this stuff, and I'll just tell you that uh, for some, uh, some wave, I'll give you a max and a min. No, we only mean 14 point five. No. You, 14 point three as well. Um, So the maximum value is at pi comma six. And the minimum is three pi negative six. Okay. I think it's probably easiest to go ahead and find the k and a. given what, where those maximum values now they're evenly above and below so the midline would be right at zero okay so then what is going to be a the maximum, minus y above. The maximum minus the minimum okay divided by two which comes out to be zero. Well, we do the maximum six. I got six six yeah okay the minus Sorry. negative six over two that's twelve over two that's six and that's not surprising either when the midline is zero it goes up to six down to six Um, what shall we find next? Period. The period. Okay. So the period. We'll always take the distance between these two, multiply it by two. We have the period. Yeah. Period. Mm -hmm. And since the period is always a positive thing, we'll always just take it to be positive. That just be the easiest thing to do, right? All right. So we'll take two times three pi minus pi. That equals two times two pi that equals four pi. That's great and all, but we use the period to find what? B. B. Uh, four pi, the period, equals two pi over B. So we multiply by B on both sides and so divide by four pi. We got B equals two pi over four pi. A and B. And now we just need to find uh, and find H. Oh. Use the 
use cosine, maximum value at pi over pi of six, pi comma six. So like if we looked at a, a graph of this real quick, at pi comes six, we get a maximum, and at three pi, negative six, we got a minimum. It was like that. Period's four pi. Yeah. Period's four pi, so over here. So this looks like the cosine wave, like that. And so, um, yeah, we'll move this to, we'll consider this to be moved to the right pi, if it's the cosine wave. So we've got y equals a times the cosine, we're using the cosine, of b, which is 1 half, times x minus pi, right pi uh, plus nothing. It's right on the x-axis. Let's be, uh, let's be a little bit creative here. Let's use a sine wave. Okay. Okay, well, it's still going to have an amplitude of 6. It's still going to have the same period, so this is still going to be 1 half. It's just really a matter of, what's that guy? Well, let's think, uh, we can consider that, right? As you see how that's where the sine would normally start, yeah, right? And uh, we can move it all the way back over here. So we can consider it being the beginning part that's moved to the right 4 pi. Right? Does that make sense? It's moved yeah. to the right 4 pi. So then what would we put here? 4 pi. Okay. Plus or minus 4 pi? Minus, minus 4 pi. Let's do another one. y equals 6 sine 1 half of x. Now, let's consider where would this be? Where would that point be? We know from here to here, right there to there is 2 pi. So that would be negative 5. So this would be, this would be, uh, that would be negative 2. No. Where would that be? Uh, that would be negative pi over 2. No. Well, maybe I haven't drawn it very well. Actually. Where, but where would it put that? That's, that's halfway between this max and this min down here. Is it a zero? Is it negative pi? Is it negative pi? Where is it? And how can we prove it? That's zero because four pi is the period. Four pi is the period. So it just and here to here is a a fourth of a period. Yeah. So it's back. So it's actually really just x. Just x. You don't even have to do plus or minus anything. Then. We could look at this all sorts of different ways. We could put negatives in front if we wanted to. So you can just see how there's variability. There's different ways to write these equations. Okay. All right. So next we're going to just take just a, a part of 14.3. It's not going to be all of it. It's going to be a little bit of it. Um, and we're going to be verifying trigonometric identities. And we're really going to be uh, proving the That's fine. Okay. So let's go over the identities that we're going to be working with. We know some of them already. Let's fill in the blanks here. This is in a bubble because we're remembering it because it's stuff we already know. Stuff we've already talked about. So the secant is one over the what? The uh, cosine. Cosine. Cosecant. One over the sine. Cotangent. One over tangent. These are what you call the reciprocal identities. Okay. And I guess, I don't know, if they named these ones. Let's see if they gave these a name. 
tangent and cotangent identities, tangent is sine over the cosine, which means that cotangent must be cosine over sine. It's the reciprocal of the tangent. And then we're going to learn some Pythagorean identities. Use those. Uh, what? Oh, but first. I'm just going to show you like the kinds of things that, that we'll want to do uh, in yeah, this section. Artsy? Yeah. With my thought bubble? Well, thank you. You can buy that uh, a, a print of this art piece online. Really? Sure. I'll make it available if you'll pay for it. But you won't sell the table. No, I won't sell that table. Uh, <laughs> so let's say we see something like tangent of theta times the cosine of theta, and we see some instructions like simplify. Making it simpler. Can we rewrite it so that maybe, like one, one common approach would be, let's try and write these as fractions so that like the denominators will get canceled out, perhaps? Can you write tangent as a fraction? such a way that it might cancel something else out? Sine. Sine over cosine. Times cosine over one, if you like. But what happens? Sine. Over left with? Just the sine. Uh, what? Hey. So if possible, if you think about all of these, the secant, cosecant, tangent, and cotangent, can all be written in terms of sine and cosine. So one strategy here would be to write in terms of cosine and sine. And see if something cancels. And this is going to work most likely if there's fractions involved, there's multiplication involved, right? There's canceling of fractions when you multiply things. So if you're multiplying things together, and you're dividing things, think maybe sines and cosines can cancel each other. Sine squared on x plus two. Let's say actually minus one plus sine squared of x. We're going to simplify that expression. But well, we would need something in this case called the Pythagorean identities. And the Pythagorean identities are listed on the first page of fourteen point three. Okay, we're not going to use the uh, what are they called? Negative angle identities or the co-function identities. We're not going to worry about those. We're going to use the, just go up to as far as the Pythagorean identities. Okay? Well, the one that we want to use is sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. It's called the Pythagorean identity because it's uh, like a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Right? For any angle, you can take it sine squared plus it's cosine squared and always get equal to 1. <laughs> that because we can move these together, cosine squared plus sine squared minus 1. And sine squared plus cosine squared is? 1. one minus 1. Is this like we're doing? Yeah, stuff like this. So I would say the two things that you would really need to do are Write in terms of sine and cosine. Okay, get stuff to cancel out. If there's multiplication and division involved, really think about doing that. Even if you see a square, don't immediately think Pythagorean identities. Maybe you could still cancel stuff out if you write it in terms of sine and cosine. For instance, tangent squared of theta. It means tangent of theta squared. Right? That's what this means. You're going to write a square right there. Well, tangent 
is sine over cosine. Right? If we square that, that would be the same as saying sine times itself over cosine times itself. So tangent squared is equal to sine squared over cosine squared. So maybe if you write tangent squared as sine squared over cosine squared, you can cancel out a cosine squared or just one cosine. Okay. So if I had tangent squared times uh, cosine times theta, uh, you could rewrite this as sine squared over cosine squared, and we wind up getting uh, sine, sine squared, squared secant. All you need to do is write this as sine over cosine, cancel out the cosine. One of the cosines for this one. And and one of the cosine times two times sine squared. That's a little bit of a new thing for you. You either rewrite as sine and cosine, or I guess they cancel out, or it seems like that's not working out as well. And you got squares in there. And there's other Pythagorean identities, there are two more that involve the tangent, of course, you get. Just like one big. They're right there in that little box. Okay? And you don't have to remember uh, those ones also go to the test. Okay? Uh, I know what this street map is. Um, what? 